So we've talked before on this podcast about how uh, the CCP's takeover of Taiwan is essential for its conquest of the Pacific Ocean. But you say that their takeover of Taiwan is part is part of a much larger ambition. What is that? The ambition, uh, Chris, is to be the hegemon in the Earth Moon system, and then, as we found out uh, in uh, mid August to become the hegemon of our solar system. And uh, after a hundred year program of extending through our solar system, I expect that uh, if it survives, the Chinese Communist Party will also be responsible for developing ever more advanced space propulsion technologies and will be working toward uh, the expansion of its power to nearby uh, solar systems and beyond. China making contact with the aliens doesn't end well. I read three body problems. It's well, not going to go well. Well, early early in uh, my following of, of this, this issue, uh, monitoring uh, Chinese web pages in uh, the, the, the mid to late 90s, uh, you, you would find that uh, the issue of extraterrestrials was, was very popular in, in China. Really? It was often expressed by Chinese netizens that, oh, we're China, so uh, the aliens are going to want to get to know us first. Uh, we're the most important. So uh, uh, they're, they're looking for us. They're not looking for the other guys. You know, I guess that makes sense because like all the American movies are about the aliens making contact with America first. So yeah, why not China first or India? But so this sounds... I mean, it sounds like a big leap. Like, I think everyone can get their mind around the idea that China wants to take over Taiwan. They've talked about it. Uh, they're sending loads of military vehicles around that area. But when you're talking about other planets, like, what what, what is this based on? It starts with the moon? Well, I, I, I think it starts ultimately with the decision of... The Chinese Communist Party, and you know this. This is something that has been percolating since uh, the early Mao Zedong era. That China must be the hegemon on Earth. That it must be the most powerful regime uh, militarily, economically. This ambition really began to crystallize after the 1989 Tiananmen uh, revolt events. It was, it was with that existential crisis for the Chinese Communist Party that, among other things, convinced them that the real threat to their dictatorship, to their power, was not so much forces within China that would tear down their legitimacy uh, and their rule, but forces on the outside of China that would influence Chinese to undermine the legitimacy and end the dictatorship of the Chinese Communist Party. And at that point, under Mao's immediate successors, it was decided that, okay, we need to make the world safe for the Chinese Communist Party. We have to change the world so that it does not end the glorious dictatorship of the Chinese Communist Party. And as the CCP was working on all of its initial uh, military modernization and hegemony programs uh, in the early 1990s. Uh, just a fantastically active period of, of uh, thought and planning and resource allocation and uh, the creation of five, 10, 50, 100 year plans, all of which are constantly updated the Chinese very quickly figured out that hegemony on Earth would not be completely possible without ever further control of the regions away from the Earth. And they very quickly decided that control of the moon or control of cislunar space, the space between the Earth and the moon, was essential to controlling low Earth orbit. Low Earth orbit, in turn, is essential 
to achieving victory on Earth. If you can control low Earth orbit and all the satellites that operate there, and then extend that control to medium Earth orbit, where, let's say, our GPS and the Chinese Baidu navigation satellites reside, and also then the deeper space uh, strategic early warning satellites of the United States and now China, you quickly come to the conclusion that, okay, we have to go to the distance. We have to go to the moon. We have to ensure that we control the moon. We control access to the moon, that we ensure that we're able to, at a minimum, exploit militarily the moon in order to control cislunar space and then low Earth orbit and then victory on Earth. But in August, there was a conference in Beijing. And at this conference, one of the chief scientists of the China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation, the dominant rocket, missile, and, and space corporation, state owned corporation of China, uh, basically outlined the, the results of a three year study by CASC. And the results of this study was that over a hundred years, in a hundred year program, China would establish settlements on the moon and then Mars and then asteroids and then moons of planets utilizing uh, uh, resources on these bodies to gather water ice, other minerals, uh, metals that are required to build things like rocket ships and also to create the fuels and the oxygen to sustain life. And that China would create these settlements out into our solar system over the next 100 years. Now, I'm sure the listeners of China Unscripted understand instantly that China, that the Chinese Communist Party is not just projecting its ability to explore and enrich humanity with the, the knowledge that it can gain by settling and populating and, and exploring our solar system. It is also extending its odious, horrible dictatorship to the solar system as well. And yes, uh, if China is successful, and to be successful, it will also have to suppress the attempts by the democracies to adequately populate the moon, Mars, and beyond, that it will be the representative of humanity that very likely first encounters other forms of life and existence beyond our own solar system. Uh, this, is, this is just a, a compound tragedy for humanity. And uh, it, it all, to me, illustrates the importance of the United States remaining a leader in the exploration of the moon, Mars, and beyond. We must never cede this high ground to the Chinese Communist Party. If we do so, we will be in, in a very large way condemning future generations to the same daily hell that most Chinese experience, but that the Chinese Communist Party will never explain to us. 